That's a MiG-23. Well, I'm actually just chilling on bench, but you know, over there, there's a B-109. Now, 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 wait a damn second right there. How did this idiot right here get inside one of the biggest technical museums in Germany? Well, let me explain. It all started back in March, when I hopped into a quick game of War Thunder and got immediately spawn killed by an M41 Bulldog. Then I did exactly what any normal human being would do to let up my other frustration. Of course I didn't just go to Zinsheim to bitch slap an M41, no. I got some footage of me with some pretty cool exhibits, but being the idiot that I am, I forgot to press record and ran around with my camera inside World War II hall like a real moron. I do actually have some video material of me talking a bit about rather interesting vehicles, and here is some footage of me walking around and being recorded by my cameraman without me actually knowing. Well, behind me you have... <laughs> well. You'd think it's a Hetzer, but it's actually not. It was used by the Swiss army and got upgraded to you know, climb the mountains or whatever. Got a couple of Seitenschützen, because why not? But this is a G13. This is not a Hetzer, it's a converted version for the Swiss army. And the, well, main gun got swapped out for the Panzer IV weapon, which I'll get to later. It's the 75 that was used mainly on the Panzer IVs, on the later versions, the F2, the G, the H, the J. And just got stuck in, it removed the original Hatzer cannon, got a muzzle brake on it. And I think it got a little bit of a stronger engine, but that's about it. Just like, Switzerland, why? Why did you do this? That's a Panzer IV. This thing is big. This is seriously big. Like, this is me and I'm like six foot something. This is big. Well, your average Panzer IV with the 75 in the front, we got actually shot in front a little bit by some American weapons. Welcome to the failed attempt of a tank. Can you call this a tank? We can't. It's a tank destroyer, actually. Well, this is the German playground slide, but it didn't work out in the end. Just like your average playground slide, but, well, it's made of steel. It weighs 56 tons and it's angled at 55 degrees in the front. The Germans were really proud of their, well, tank destroyers. What they essentially did, they just used hulls of very mass-produced tanks, like a Panther and a Panzer IV. They just removed the turret, slapped on a very, very powerful gun, and, well, put the word Jagd in front of it. That's how you got the Jagdpanther, that's how you got the Jagdpanzer and the Jagdtiger. Behind me, you see the ass cheeks of 10 remaining uh, Jagdpanthers in the entire world. That's like one, one of them. Behind me, you have one of the more rare planes of the Second World War. It's a Ju-87, a B modification to be exact. This particular aircraft was lifted up from 90 meters uh, from down from the sea level near Saint-Tropez in France. Apparently crashed and, well, survived the crash and, well, got lifted up. It's hard to believe that this thing dived at, like, such a high speed, well, to be one of the more frightening planes of the Second World War. And this thing is huge. You can't even get it all on the screen. Yeah. JU-87, nothing much more to say. I don't like this tank. I don't. After realizing that I can't speak in front of a camera because I get nervous, I headed to one of the most interesting tanks in their collection. Behind me, you have the failed attempt of the counterpart to the T-34 from the Soviet Union. This is a Panther A, which was dug up in Ukraine and like a Cherkasy something, and was used during 1944 at the uh, battle for Kazun Cherkasy. And well, well, this hole on the left side was actually not caused by the enemy, it was destroyed by its own crew. It got blown up. The exact cause why this got blown up in the first place is unclear, but I think it just got like an engine problem, transmission problem, average German technology during that time. But this was abandoned and well dug up some years later and then, well, restored and brought to this museum. On top you have the uh, 75 millimeter. A bunch of Zimmerits slept over this thing, and it's huge. It is huge. Look above, it's huge. And well, nothing much more to say. It just got blown up to smithereens on the side. You have the uh, number 334 or something. But well, 
I think this is not the best example of Panto I can give because it's a failed attempt at completely countering the tank. So I'll give you a better example. This is a bit of a more of a lively example. It's the same Panther A tank, but it's not slapped full of Timurit. And what's great about this particular museum is that you can just, for two euros, you can actually control this tank. Let's give it a spin. After successfully raising my self-esteem, knowing that I just controlled a panther tank, I went towards their amazing outside section. This is the EBR, the 1951 uh, version. So this is without the heat of S and without the AMX uh, 13 turret with the outer loader. This is the uh, one with the oscillating turret. You know, you have the steel wheels that you can put down to get a little bit of faster speeds. Just like your average EBR. Then we have a flak, the Russian and a German Zwillings flak. So we have the Russian in the back and the Zwilling in the front. After that, we're heading to a Leopard 1. This is a later modification. This should be the 1A3, which has a little bit more armor on it. It's not as blank as the, well, Leopard 1 when it first got introduced. But you see, it's got a little, a little bit rusty. It has the 105 cannon up front. Now behind me, we still have the um, Hotchkiss tank and well another naval cannon which was used probably later on the Bundesmarine. I think it was on the Hamburg Klasse. Big cannons. Next up, we're going to an M47. Another pattern. But this time without any inside. So just the outside of the normal pattern. Nothing special. I have a two-man bunker from the Second World War used by Germany. I don't know what they thought when they designed that. And we have a, a M47, M74 again, sorry. It's got built on the Sherman chassis, just, you know, to get some things up. Get some captured vehicles in. Got an HS30. Pretty rare, actually. You have the 20 mil on the front. Now behind me, we have the British bees that, well, we call a Centurion. This should be the Mark III or the Mark V, I'm not entirely sure. But this was one of the very first MBTs, you know, the Centurion Mark I, the 17-pounder, I think. And well, it developed into this beast, that's probably a Mark III, if I'm not mistaken. It's got a huge cannon. I always love the chassis of the Centurions, they always look great. I love Centurions, they are great, really. And then we have, well, an Beobachtungspanzer, which was mainly used um, as a Sherman, just a little bit different. That was used to look at nuclear blasts and blasts in general, just to, like observe close up. Why they did this, no idea. Behind me, you actually have uh, the PVV 103. That was the SPA modification. Uh, this one is just the Panzerband Wagen 301. So, probably got used in more ways. I'm not Swedish, I have no idea. But I only know like the SPA version of this. Continue with the M59, whatever this thing is. Another M47, this time used by the Bundeswehr, as you can see on the roundel there. Going over to a little light tank of the M3 Stewart. Now with the star of the armor on, on the turret. They look small but they're actually pretty big. Then we have the chassis of a martyr which is way bigger than I expected. This thing is huge. No, just a martyr, nothing more to see here. Behind me, we have an M26 Pershing, which was used like, you know, the very famous Battle of Cologne against the Panther A, which I showed before. It's not the one, but it's an M26. The earlier version without any heavier armor on it. We got an M16 half track with three cannons instead of four. 
So just an SBA. Next to this we have one of my favorite tanks, it's the M24 Chaffee. Light tank used by America. Pretty small boy. I just love the design of it, it's honestly great. Next to this we have the T72, which is all over the news now, the T72. Not the Turms, just a bland naked T72 without any ERA armor on it. Got the engine of the T72 as well, with 780 horsepower. Not bad. T72. Over there, well, another T34. Just like the table reads, Legendärer Russischer Panzer T34. Well, just tr roughly translate to Legendary T34 Soviet tank. Uh, behind me, actually, there's a BMP 1, which is all over the news as well. Actually, I thought this is <laughs> way bigger, but it is pretty <laughs> well armored from what I thought. I, like, yeah, 73 millimeters on the front. Not bad. We buy another 10.5 mil. Um, yeah, 10,5 centimeter Fliegerabwehrgeschütz. That's one of five against, you know, bombers, planes in general. Next up, we're greeted by the Leopard 1, which is actually facing to the other side. But this is the second prototype of the Leopard 1, so not the very first design. So this is rather special of an exhibition. But as you can see, the hull is still the one from the normal Leopard 1, I think. But yeah, the turret as well. But something is different on it. I still have no idea what exactly it is. For the year 1960, this is quite special, really. Heading over to, well, the very much like T-55. Right next to some plates used on the KMS Tirpit, which was sunk in Norway. And behind there we have, well, you know, the gun which was mainly used on Fletcher-class destroyers. But as well, like we have an armor plate of the turbots on the, on the front. But there we have it, a T-55 barrel. Average T-55, which was similar from the T-54 Soviet tank. Now this is a real Leopard 1, as we all know it. This was the first prototype of the Leopard 1. Which was later, yeah. Mainly loose, but after that they upgraded it to a 1A5, 1A1, and well later the Leopard 2K and the Leopard 2. Well, we still have a couple of tanks in front of me. We have another M48 this time. This was used by the uh, Bundeswehr as well, but this particular one was used by the US Army. The only thing different from the M47 is probably the engine and the turret mainly. It's just, you know, a big, large turret. If we go to the left side, we have a couple of howitzers, the M7B2, used by America as well on... That should be a Sherman chassis, could be an M3 Lee, I am not entirely sure. Going over to the Kampfpanzer 61, or the Kampfpanzer 61, which I'd love to actually see in the game. Because this one is fairly special, like as an event vehicle, it will be pretty cool to see this. Going over here, we have a couple of tracked vehicles, like the BTR 152, like in the Soviet Tech tree. Behind there, we have an M42 Duster, I think. That's the one. Built on the Bulldog chassis. And back there, we have another, well, M3 half track. Uh, on the left side, actually, is the Vespa. This was a Panzer Haubitzer. Like, your normal Haubitzer from Germany. In the Second World War, open top, because why not? And over there we have an SU-100. <laughs> they said that it's a Selbstfaller fitter. Well, it actually is. Just, you know, the T-34 chassis with a 100mm gun slapped onto it. Just like the Germans did. They really like doing that. And another T-34. Because why not? Because every museum has to have a T-34. And that is actually it for the outside. Um, I don't think there's much more I will show in the Zinsheim Museum, since all of the main planes uh, are over at Speyer, which I will go to tomorrow. But you can kind of see back there is a Canberra bomber. And over there we have an SU-22. But yeah, that is probably it for the uh, Technik Museum Zinsheim. And I will see you, well, tomorrow. Goodbye. Overall, the Technik Museum Zinsheim is an impressive museum with a lot of special exhibits. 
Of course, I am a little bit mad that I couldn't show off some indoor tanks like the Möbelwagen or the Panzer III, because I forgot to press record. The plane museum will be covered in the second part of my journey sometime this week. To make up for it, here's a couple of clips of me messing around with some World War II tanks. Yo! Target undamaged! The commander's been knocked out! Those fuckers stole my machine gun! Hi there, name's Hero, and I want to show you something very interesting real quick. It's the ass of a Jagdpanzer. 